we had discussed with the postulates which are called Huntington postulates and then um, uh, one of the set that satisfy the Huntington postulate is set contains only 0 and 1 which has only two values and then uh, we defined uh, what are the binary operators uh, one was the OR operation and the other was the AND operation and with these operations for this two element set we have seen that all postulates uh, specified in the Huntington um, postulates uh, were satisfied and then based on these uh, postulates we started looking at various theorems we proved various theorems now uh, the one theorem that was left uh, was I think uh, absorption so let us uh, look at uh, uh, that theorem so that was anybody to remember the number theorem 6 I don't exactly remember the number <coughs> uh, six, yeah. Sir. yeah okay so theorem 6 so that was called uh, absorption uh, this is x plus x uh, dot y is equal to x okay so we need to prove this so whenever we prove something uh, we use those postulates at each steps as I have uh, discussed uh, multiple times in the last class uh, so here so we take LHS and then we show it equal to RHS so LHS is basically x plus x dot y now x uh, you can write it as uh, x uh, dot 1 plus x dot y uh, so this is uh, basically which one uh, this is uh, identity operator for uh, um, the dot operation or and operation is uh, 1 so we can say identity element and then I can take uh, x outside and I can write it as 1 plus x dot y sorry uh, 1 plus y ok so this is uh, distributive property or distributive law ok so x dot dot operator is distributed with respect to uh, plus operator ok so now 1 plus y is basically equal to 1 this uh, was a theorem that we proved uh, isn't it uh, I, I think it was theorem 2 theorem 2 so <coughs> which uh, we have already proved earlier so now this is equal to x uh, by again identity operator identity operator for dot operation is 1 ok so that is basically your RHS so we have proved it so this way uh, you can prove uh, various uh, theorems ok now the, uh, these uh, steps that we have uh, followed in showing these theorems uh, could also be used uh, to simplify a uh, expression give a given expression so so just like here we, we, we had a initial expression uh, which was x plus x dot y but then we showed that it is equal to x ok so this is a uh, in, in a way you can say that this is a simplified expression x is the simplified uh, way of specifying x plus x dot y ok so now let us go to the concept of boolean function yes sir yes so what about derivation for the d model students oh I have not given that oh right ok so let us do that also so the addition number 5 sir oh yes 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 number 5 we did not do ok All right. okay. so theorem 5 which was the organs uh, yeah 
So this is D Morgan's theorem. Okay, so uh, one I will show, the other is basically the dual. So x plus y complement is equal to x complement dot y complement. So this is basically called the Morgan's theorem. Now, if you look at, we, we are basically defining complement. Okay, so uh, Morgan's theorem basically giving the expression for complement okay complement so in this case it is a complement of x plus y complement of x plus y now if this is actually the complement then it has to satisfy certain rule therefore it is required to satisfy two properties two properties in the definition of complement definition of complement so what are the two properties in the definition of complement if uh, uh, there is a okay, let me take another variable so a is the a variable and we say that uh, a dash is its complement then it has to satisfy number one a plus a dash is equal to one you have to show and then number two a dot a dash okay equal to zero so if it satisfies these two property then uh, a dash is the complement of uh, a so so that that is what we have to check so let's check first of all uh, number one okay so that means uh, we are saying that x x x dash or x complement dot y complement or x dash dot y y dash is the complement of x plus y so first thing we have to check is basically x plus y plus x dash uh, dot y dash is it equal to 1 you have to see ok this is a check we have to do first check that means if it is if it can be shown that it is equal to 1 then uh, we have uh, successfully uh, you know satisfied the first test ok so how do we do this uh, so x plus y plus uh, now if you ok so now what we can do is uh, ok so let us distribute uh, let's apply so LHS let me take LHS is equal to x plus y plus x dash y dash so first thing I am going to do is basically to distribute so there is a dot here so I am going to distribute the plus with respect to dot so x plus y plus x dash then dot x plus y plus y dash ok I can do this so this is which property this is distributive property so distributive property. ok what else now if you look at here x plus y plus x dash I can basically uh, uh, you know do commutative property so and write it as x dash plus x plus y ok I just uh, a plus b is equal to b plus a so that I have used and then here I, I don't need to do this 
it is already in a convenient form so here I have used the commutative property it may look very trivial but actually even if we, if at all you have to do it in, uh, in mathematically there has to be a valid reason for that okay you may say that uh, what is there you just uh, moved a x dash first and uh, pushed x plus y to the other side that looks so obvious yeah that, that's how usually we practice uh, in day to day calculation but mathematically that is not so obvious uh, every every operator uh, doesn't uh, allow that so therefore uh, you have to say the reason why you are able to do it now uh, so we are doing things very formally I hope you, you, you are able to uh, get what I am doing here. So here also uh, th there is a bracket here. Okay. So also there is a bracket and then x plus. So can you tell me what did I do in this step? What should I write? the reason for what I did commutative no no this is not commutative commutative was earlier I have uh, you know interchange the position between this ok so this is commutative so here it is x plus y in associative bracket. sir uh, associative 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 so basically we as, uh, associated uh, basically the bracket is changed right so the yes, order sir. order is not changed in the past when the associative property I, we said it is a theorem right we proved it theorem 4 right which we yes, proved. Sir. Mm. so you write the reason for that now uh, you see that x dash plus x what is it i just uh, wrote it here itself that is 1 and uh, here x plus 1 which is the property complement right complement has to satisfy that property so ok now 1 plus y is what 1 1 pl x plus 1 is also 1 which property is this? Theorem 2. Theorem 1. Theorem 2. Theorem 1 was what? Theorem 1 was uh, x plus x is equal to. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Theorem 2. Yeah. So now this is 1. And, uh, that is basically theorem 1. Okay. So every minute thing like every step that we took uh, there is a reason why we could do it. So it is a very formal way of uh, proof is uh, a thing that you need to do in a very formal manner. Okay, You have to justify every step uh, when you do it. So this is a rigorous proof. Okay, There is an alternate way of proving things that is by just drawing the table. Okay, Then uh, if you show if you show it by table. Uh, just like I showed you how to satisfy the property of all the postulate is satisfied there uh, we couldn't prove uh, uh, theorems we can prove like this or uh, things like this we can prove but uh, postulates you cannot uh, prove uh, rigorously okay they are axioms they are uh, fundamental assumptions so they don't have any proof rigorous proof but they can be verified by drawing tables but the same thing could be done for these theorems also uh, then you have to uh, take all the possible combinations if there are two variables four combinations you have to take and then uh, you calculate uh, this LHS expression and you will you should get everything one 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 in all the four cases okay that is an alternate way of doing it so so uh, but this is the rigorous proof okay uh, which uh, mathematicians do all right so that is part of it now the second property that need to be satisfied uh, is number two. So still the proof is not completed. We have only showed a part of it. 
So second thing is that x plus y when it is uh, uh, dotted with the dot operation with its complement. So complement what we are saying is uh, x dash y dash. Okay, so you should get zero. So are we getting zero or not? We have to check. Okay, so we are saying the complement of x plus y is x x x da x complement dot y complement. If that is true, then x plus y dot uh, x complement dot y complement you should get zero. Okay, so LHS again. Let's proceed. Is x plus y dot x dash dot y dash. Uh, again, we can use uh, uh, distribution property uh, either with respect to plus or with respect to dot, whichever you like. You can use. Um, so I am going to use um, x dot x dot y dot. Then plus y dot x dot y dot okay so i distributed uh, this dot with respect to this plus okay now uh, if you look at this again same thing we can do uh, but before we do association property let us uh, you know interchange these positions of these two terms so x dot x dot y dot you really don't need to put a bracket here because uh, dot operation has uh, larger preference uh, compared to plus operation so which i did not say before i will say after this okay so you can now write uh, you can interchange these positions so that is x dot y dot dot y okay so here we have used so here i have used the distributive here i am using commutative okay and now what should i use just like before i will associate associative property for um, uh, dot operation I have not proved but uh, only for plus operation I have proved but uh, it's a dual of that so that's why I didn't prove so you should try all the dual without looking at uh, these proof uh, by yourself so that is a good way of learning things and then x dot okay so here I have used the theorem okay now what mm, so this is what x dot x complement zero right plus which property is that Complement. Yeah, properties of complement. So, which is what we are actually proving also, okay? Uh, but for uh, multiple variables. Okay, so now we are almost there. Mm, now, what is this and why? What is this? 0 dot y dash. Zero, zero, okay, and uh, plus is also zero. Can you tell me the reason? The it's a dual sum. Dual of theorem two, okay. Yes. Ah, so, so the theorem two what we proved was uh, x plus one equal to one. So if you take the dual, you change plus with the dot and uh, one with zero so you have so this is the dual okay this one if you prove you know the proof of this 
and then this is theorem one so you see this looks very obvious but that is from our plus operation actually plus is or operation not uh, simple addition so that is why everything has to be uh, laid out uh, step by step like this all right so both uh, we have shown and therefore uh, the two properties that need to be satisfied by the complement uh, are satisfied by uh, x dash dot y dash okay so therefore x dash dot y dash is a valid complement of x plus y because it satisfies uh, two property and the dual of this is basically uh, the other part of de, de, de morgan's other uh, theorem I mean second part of de morgan's theorem which is uh, similarly you can show similarly x dot y the whole uh, is equal to x is this okay this can also be proven in a similar manner so here we are saying the complement of x dot y is this so to check that you need to basically x dot y you have to add with uh, the rhs and see whether it is one and similarly x dot y you multiply with the uh, rhs you should get zero so then it is a valid complement all right so now we are going to go into another topic which is called boolean functions now now function you know that it is a mapping between so two sets right function is always a mapping between two sets so here the set we are interested in is basically made up of zeros and ones okay so the two valued uh, set usually it is called by the letter capital b okay now you can have uh, multiple variables though possible for example uh, if we have uh, a n variable n variable uh, boolean function then it could be uh, represented as the following mapping that is each variable could take either 0 or 1 and there are n variable so we will denote like this okay and from that set uh, we will uh, map to 0 or 1 ok so this is I hope you understand what I mean by this so this is an alternate way of uh, uh, you know, a simplified way of writing a, a n variable uh, mm, uh, I mean a n boolean variables ok so each variable can take 0 or 1 ok the, if there are n variable uh, each variable can take 0 or 1 so you have a uh, set uh, which is uh, larger in size so in, instead of writing all the combinations which are possible with the uh, uh, n variables you can in a simple way write like this ok for example uh, example if uh, n is equal to 2 uh, one way you can write is uh, this what I told you you can say that this is uh, mapping from this to 1 0 or 1 alternatively if you want to have an expanded way of uh, showing it you can say 0 0 0 1 uh, 1 0 1 1 from this you are mapping to 0 that means the input can be any of this function as an input and it gives you an output so boolean function uh, gives out uh, output uh, will be either 0 or 1 ok so it is one of the uh, values in the set so it can only take uh, either 0 or 1 there is no other uh, case possible ok but input can be if there are 2 bits it can have uh, 4 different combination if n is equal to 3 it can have 8 different combination but instead of uh, so these are same same thing it is representing same thing so in general 0 1 with uh, this uh, this is called a tensor product basically uh, of uh, uh, n 
in such a set if you do the tensor product you will get this okay so so i will maybe show for two variable you can uh, do like this okay so then it means uh, then one tensor with the zero one. so this is how you can show so this is equal to now uh, zero tensor with zero zero uh, tensor with one one tensor with zero one tensor with one Okay, so which uh, in a simplified uh, representation you can drop this tensor symbol and then uh, you can. So basically we need to keep track that the first variable corresponding to variable say x. Uh, okay, so this is basically f of x comma y. Okay, so x uh, is basically this first position and y is the second position. Okay, so so this corresponds to x and this corresponds to y so x x can have two possibilities y can have two possibilities so when you take the tensor product you, you have uh, four possibilities and the result of f of x y uh, is basically either 0 or 1 it cannot have any any other thing possible okay so now let's uh, look at uh, one variable functions variable boolean function so can you tell me how many boolean functions are possible so question how many boolean functions are possible with the just one variable anybody can answer how many boolean functions are possible with just one variable that means we have a function like this how many such uh, Sir. yes two. two any other answer okay so two means f1 and say f4. F2, 4, okay. Uh, F3, F4. Now, can you tell what are those functions? The answer is 4. Can you tell what are the functions? Sir, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0. No, there is only one variable. X can be either 0 or 1. The answer is correct. Okay, a function can be uh, specified uh, either by using uh, the Boolean expression, just like earlier we did various expression x plus y whole bar etc. This way you can represent a Boolean function or it could be represented by a truth table. Okay, so a not a Boolean function could be represented either by a boolean expression or by its truth table. So truth table means you have to list all the possible values x can take and then correspondingly what is the value the function take okay so let's uh, uh, draw the truth table here table uh, 
representation of f1x, f2x, f3x and f4x. Okay. Let us do that. So, first one. Uh, so, we have one variable input which can take value 0 or 1 and here we have a function f1x ok so tell me one one such function f of x i can put 0 0 right again another function f2 when x is equal to 0. So, here this, this function you can say as f f1 of x is equal to 0. Similarly, I can say f2 of x is equal to 0. So, sorry, uh, f2 of x is equal to 1. That is another function. That means, irrespective of the value of the input, I have the result equal to 1. Tell me another function, f3. Zero and one. Zero and one. So this is basically x. That is also a valid function. <coughs> then one more. Zero sir. One zero. Very good. So that is basically the complement. This is all that is possible with uh, a single variable. You can have uh, at the maximum four. So now you 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 get the idea how you, you get the four number of function. That's because first you lay, lay lay down what are the different combinations which input can take. That is in this one variable case it is zero and one. Now I can independently associate either zero or one in each case of the input. So when input is equal to zero, I can have zero or one. Right. And uh, so there are two different ways I can do that. And then input is equal to 1 also I can have two different ways. So 2 into 2 that is 4. Okay. So, so when, so these are the cases which input can take. When input is equal to 0, I can fill this place in two different ways. I can have either 0 or 1. And when input is equal to 1, I can do again two different ways. I can have 0 or 1. So, here there is 2, here there is 2. So, total case is 2 into 2, which is 4. So, that is how you find out. So, if you have understood this, then uh, I can go to two variable function. Which is more interesting. And that is what give rise to all kinds of gates. Okay. So let us call uh, the input variables as x and y. Let x, y be the input variables. Okay. These variables are uh, Boolean variables, which means it can it take only 0 or 1. So that is understood. I, I, I do not need to specify it all the time. And uh, Boolean in, in general could be larger uh, set, but uh, we, we in this course we are only restricting ourselves to um, two valued Boolean set. Okay. So let x, y be the input Boolean variables. Uh, so if you want to write the truth table. I have a 0, 0, one case, another case, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Now here is what I am going to write the functions. Now how many different ways I can write the function? Can you tell me? So this place, how many ways I can fill up? Two ways. Two ways, 0 or 1. And sim similarly, this place also I can fill up two, two ways. ways, 0 or 1. 
and all of these are independent right the way i fill up one position doesn't uh, is is not bound or dependent on what i fill up on the other position i can do it independent so now tell me well, how many functions are possible with the two variable 16 yeah yes yes 2 into 2 into 2 so which is equal to 16 possibilities so can you give a formula now uh, if n is a number of variable how do you write uh, uh, the total number of possibilities which should satisfy huh sir 2 to the power n 2 to the, the power 2 ah 2 to the power of 4 right here in this case right earlier it was 2 to the power of 2 Yes, sir. Uh, in general, case sir, two to the power n. Yeah. So here it is uh, two to the power two. Now, if I connect it with n, then two to the power two raised to one. So this is two to the power two raised to two. right so therefore for n variable boolean function total uh, possibilities what you possibility means total functions that are possible is 2 raised to 2 raised to n so if it is 3 therefore for n is equal to 3 how many functions are possible 2 raised to 2 raised to 3 is 2 raised to 8 is 256 256 functions are possible so this is exponentially rising the number of functions that are possible is exponentially rising okay now let's come back to our uh, two variable we are going to list out li list down all these functions okay so this is f let's say let's call the functions from f0 to f15 okay so this is 0 0 0 0 That is one function. Then f one zero 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 one f two zero zero one zero. Ah, uh, in principle, I should write f as a function of x comma uh, like this. Here. This is the correct way of writing. But for uh, you know. making the table little smaller i am just dropping out this but you have to assume that uh, there are two variables here and this function depends on so 0 0 1 1 so like that uh, f4 0 1 1 0 f6 0 f7 f10 1 0 1 0 11 1 0 1 1 f12 1 1 0 0 13 1 1 0 1 f14 
one 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 zero and f fifty one 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 one. Okay, so these are the 16 cases, 0 to 15, uh, F0 to F15, we have different case. So now, can you give the Boolean expression for this? For example, what is F0? F0 is? F0 is 0, right? It does not depend upon? Uh, this is a boolean expression okay it does not depend upon uh, x or y all the time it is 0 it is like a constant function then what is f1 what is a boolean expression for uh, uh, so to get uh, the boolean expression for uh, uh, any function what you need to do is look for the cases where there are multiple ways you can write it one of the way you can write it is uh, you look for the um, uh, uh, case where it is equal to 1 ok so certain places it is 0 certain places it is 1 now look for the cases uh, where it is uh, equal to 1 uh, if uh, the number of 1's are smaller ok uh, certain cases uh, you see f7 you have 3 1's here so it is better to look for the cases of 0 uh, in order to get a more concise there are multiple expressions that are possible for each boolean function ok so let me uh, write uh, the simple way of writing is look for the cases uh, where it is 0 or 1 which is for the minimum time ok so in this case 1 appears only 1 time 0 appears 3 times so now what brings the 1 is basically uh, x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 so when x equal to 1 y equal to 1 so that is like uh, an AND gate AND operation right so AND operation x dot y you know that it will give you which we have uh, defined earlier when we started the boolean algebra we had to define what is the dot operation I, we said that this is called AND operation uh, when both are 1 then only output equal to 1 so this is basically an AND operation so that is basically AND gate, one of the function possible. Uh, next F2, F2 what is F2? So if you look at x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. So y equal to 0 I can say that uh, y complement is equal to 1. Okay. So it is an AND operation with x and y bar, I can say like this okay okay then f2 then f3 excuse me sir yes sir can you please repeat that f2 part f f2 okay yes, f2 sir. f2 is only one in one case that is when x equal to 1 and y equal to 0 right so this is the case this is the only case where it is 1 in that case so we have x equal to 1 and y equal to 0 Okay. If y equal to 0 means what? y complement is equal to 1. So, if I write it as an AND gate operation, when both are equal to 1, it will give you 1. So, that means x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. Y, y, y complement equal to 1. Right? x equal to 1 and y complement equal to 1. That is the case where it is equal to 1. So, y is equal to 0, x equal to, x equal to 1, y equal to 0 that is the case where it is equal to 1 but you can also say it as x equal to 1 and instead of saying y equal to 0 I can say y complement is equal to 1 so x equal to 1 and y complement equal to 1 so that is the time you get 1 ok yes sir yeah. similarly mm, f3 so f3 of x y can you tell me now there are two cases one is coming if you simply look at you see that f3 is just as x right f3 and x are same right 
so f3 is basically x but if if you follow the logic which i told you earlier what will you get can you tell me x dot y complement then that is one way it can come or this is plus means or operation or x dot y then if you use boolean algebra what will you get you can simplify it this you can write it as x dot y bar plus y this is your distributive and then this will become x dot 1 this is your complement this is equal to x this is your identity element okay so but even by observation itself you can see that it is equal to x you just look at x column and f3 column they are same all right so uh, this way you can uh, proceed then can you tell the next one what is this quickly what is this function is equal to 1 only 0 and 1 so you can say it as anyone x equal to 0 x equal sir, to hello sir ah yes sir so in the x part we are looking at the x side or what sir repeat the question uh, x part means for what yes, value yes. what value of x we have it is 1 is coming we are looking at the case where 1 is coming so far. Okay. So 1 is coming when x equal to 0. In other words, x, x complement is equal to 1 dot then y equal to 1. So when x, x, x bar equal to 1 and y equal to 1. When both are satisfied, we have f4 equal to 1. That's the only case. Oh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Next, can you tell me this one? In a similar way? Sir, uh, X complement. Hmm. Dot uh, Y. Dot Y. Plus. Plus. X X dot Y sir. Dot Y. Now don't you think you can simplify this? Yes sir. So what will you get? Can you quickly say? What does it amount to? Based uh, on so your, y. It is equal to Y. Which you can verify, right? This yes, FY sir. if you look at Y, they are same. So by observation also you could say that it is equal to Y. Okay. Uh, so let me just uh, write it here f4 is equal to x y x complement y f5 is equal to y then next f6 can you tell f6 mm, ok I will shift it a little bit What is f6? Yes, sir, same case as the previous one. No, no, it is not same case. Here one is in the middle. Okay, you mean the first case is same, yeah. And the second is right? Yes, sir. So this uh, has a notation is called XOR gate ok so F6 is XOR gate
x x or y okay next f7 now f7 as you see um, it is better to look at zero the case is because there is only one case if you want to write uh, by looking at the case where one appear you will have three terms that you need to add right just like here two terms are added here you need to add three terms but if you look at the case of zero there is only one case where zero comes it is therefore we get a mm, more uh, simpler expression if you look at uh, the case of zero now when is zero coming so here when is zero coming zero is coming when x equal to zero and y equal to zero right x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 so this is basically or uh, or gate so now we are not taking dot operation for when you look at 0 coming at the function output we we look for uh, the possibility uh, through which uh, 0 can come so we need to consider the or operation when x is equal to 0 x is equal to c. See, in OR operation what happens? If uh, the total thing has to become 0, everything has to be 0. x should be 0, y should be 0. When you consider AND operation, each uh, term or each, uh, each it is called literal. Okay? Each literal has to be 1. Because you are writing it as um, like dot dot dot. So, each literal if it is 1, then only the total product term will be 1. Whereas when you write it as an OR, or operation, each literal has to be 0 so that the entire thing will become 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0. So if there are many more literals, then all the literals has to be 0, then only it will become 0. So we are looking at the case where 0 can come. So you have to do it with OR operation and each element has to be 0. Alright, so that is uh, OR gate. And next one? And gate, sir. No. Uh, and means it's not a normal AND gate. So can you give me the expression for this? X dot Y sir. No, 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 no. X dot Y means the last case should be 1. Here the first case is becoming 1, right? the first case that is x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 so how do you write it sir x complement or y complement yes x complement dot y complement that's correct okay now next this one so you have two cases where it is one what should be the expression so if you write it using AND gate or, or because it, there are two ones and two zeros, so you can adopt <coughs> any strategy. Either you can write it as sum of two product terms or uh, product of two sum terms. F9. The cases of one, if you look at x equal to zero, which we set just now, that is x complement y complement, and also there is another one which is what this one x dot y right are you following what I am saying hello so what we are doing is we are basically looking at uh, the boolean expression for the truth table there are 16 truth table that i have listed here each of the truth table correspond to a particular function and we are looking at the try to get the expression for this uh, boolean expression for this function okay so can you tell the next one uh, this one What is this? The 
this is one way one can come or one could come in here also that is x equal to 1 y equal to 0 ok ok so then next somebody can tell next what about this one look at the 0 that will be better there is only one zero and that is come when x equal to 0 and y equal to 1 so how do you write it x equal to 0 and y bar equal to 0 ok when x equal to 0 and y bar equal to 0 x plus y bar is equal to 0 ok so this way you can uh, complete uh, everything uh, so almost we are reaching there are two three or four more are there which you do yourself so it is all similar way you can proceed either you can look at the number of zeros uh, or you can look at uh, number of ones so if there if you want to write uh, the two zero cases by looking at zero so that also I will just show you uh, this case so I want to look at uh, the zero appearing cases and write this expression then how will we write so one zero is coming here but uh, by inspection also you can see that it is basically x bar ok this is by inspection you can see it is x bar but uh, by using the method which I told you earlier uh, you can write it an alternate way also and that is that look at the cases where zero comes so 0 is coming when x equal to 1 x equal to 1 means x bar is equal to 0 and then y equal to 0 ok into now we are putting dot and then x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 okay. so this way also you can write now you should be able to show that this is equal to x bar and that is uh, quite obvious if you use distributive property then it is basically x plus uh, y dot y bar which is equal to x plus 0 which is equal to x ok so here I have used uh, distributive go from here to here and then here I have used uh, complement and here I have used identity ok so now I will stop here if you have any questions you can ask